Morning, everyone. It is Tuesday today, April 21st. Welcome to you all and a special welcome to anybody who might be new uh, to these daily devotional videos. Uh, and a big thank you to uh, all of those of you who have been subscribing to this channel. Uh, we had around 30 subscribers to our YouTube channel when this began, and we have over 100 right now. Uh, and that's great, but I, I want to invite you all to continue to invite your friends uh, to subscribe to this channel or to share these videos with if there is anyone in your life uh, that really needs to be nourished by God's Word uh, at this very difficult time. Uh, I invite you to share this page and to share these videos with them. Uh, but then again, thank you to, to you all for joining me today and thanks for making God's Word a priority. Uh, because today we have a, a very, very interesting psalm. And so uh, on this Tuesday, I invite you to hear the Word of the Lord from Psalm 6. David says, O Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger or discipline me in your wrath. Be merciful to me, Lord, for I am faint. O Lord, heal me, for my bones are in agony. My soul is in anguish. How long, O Lord? How long? Turn, O Lord, and deliver me. Save me because of your unfailing love. No one remembers you when he is dead. Who praises you from the grave? I am worn out from groaning. All night long I flood my bed with weeping and drench my couch with tears. My eyes grow weak with sorrow. They fail because of all my foes. Away from me, all you who do evil, for the Lord has heard my weeping. The Lord has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord accepts my prayer. All my enemies will be ashamed and dismayed. They will turn back in sudden disgrace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. These words uh, from Psalm 6 are once again from King David. And I think that we can all agree that these words in Psalm 6 are pretty, pretty intense. David is clearly in a very, very dark place. Sounds like he is dying or that death is near or that he's been dealing with something for a really long time. His body is in anguish. His soul is in agony. He is, his f body is physically weak from his groaning. He's crying all night to the degree that he says that his couch is drenched with tears. Here we are in Psalm 6, and the Psalms and David continue to surprise us. David, as many of us know, was the most important king in the history of Israel. He was a very, very powerful guy. This is the man who defeated the giant Goliath. And here he is in Psalm 6, crying all night long. King David is supposed to be strong and mighty, and here in Psalm 6, he looks and he sounds extremely weak. And it's clear from these words that these are words of, of someone who has been carrying some kind of very heavy burden with them for a, a long time. Something has been wearing on David for an extended period of time, and in Psalm 6, he has come to the breaking point. He doesn't know what to do. He can't sleep and he can't stop crying. He cannot seem to get himself out of his despair. Now, I know that this is not where some of you are right now. Some of you have even expressed to me that you and your families have, some, have found some sort of enjoyment in this slower pace. You're, you're finding enjoyment in being together more, doing different activities together. But I also know that some of you are getting weary. Some of you have lost your jobs. Some of you have lost income. Some of you are not able to see your families. You have sick family members. Some of you are weary from doing school at home with your kids. Some of you are lonely. 
Some of you are really, really worried about what the future holds. And maybe some of you have reached your breaking point. This whole crisis has been weighing on you. In Psalm 6, David, King David, shows us and models for us what we're supposed to do when we are at that point. David clearly in Psalm 6, he barely has the heart to pray. And I think for many of us, when we reach a place like this, when we reach a place like what David reaches, we think that our problems are bigger than God or we're ashamed to go to God or we don't even think about crying out to him or we think that there is something wrong with us and so we need to figure out how to get ourselves to stop crying and get ourselves off the couch and to sleep at night. Or maybe we're skeptics. And we don't feel like God is going to do anything anyway. But at the end of the psalm, the language that David uses here is of assurance of God's action and God's plan to act, even though God hasn't done anything yet. At the end of the psalm, God hasn't done anything about David's circumstances. And yet somehow David seems assured that God will do something. Psalm 6 assures us that something happens when we cry out to God. It might not be exactly what we want to happen, but something happens when God's people cry out to their God. David uses the word chesed. That's chesed with a ch. And in the NIV, it's translated as unfailing love in verse 4. But the word chesed is more accurately speaking to covenant faithfulness. David, when he uses this word, David believes that God is the kind of God who keeps his promises. And that belief not only leads David to cry out to him, but in crying out to God, David is assured that God will act. Do you believe this? Do you believe in God's faithfulness? Do you believe in this unfailing love of God to his people, this covenant faithfulness? Do you believe that despite all the pain and the sickness and the death that we are experiencing right now, that God is going to be faithful? Do you have this belief that even if we cannot see what God is doing, that he will act because God does what he says? If This is where you are. If you have reached your breaking point, I invite you today to pray the words of Psalm 6. Cry out to God like David does. Voice your physical pain and your spiritual pain. Be assured that God wants you to cry out to him. But don't only do these things. Profess and lean on his unfailing love, his covenant faithfulness. Be assured that you are praying to a God who does what he says, who keeps his promises. If Psalm 6 is not where you are at, and David, David's words today seem pretty intense to you, I want to ask you today, is there someone who is in this place? that is having a hard time with all of this, that you should pray for, that you should reach out to. And I want to invite you and your families to pray today that God would meet the people of the world who are in this place, that God would meet people in their physical pain and their spiritual pain, and that God would assure them of his unfailing love. I invite you to pray today that people around the world, especially people who are in a very dark place, that they would cry out to their creator and that they would experience the unfailing love of God in Jesus Christ. 
that God would use this painful and dark crisis to bring people back to him. People of God, may the Lord be with you.